There are literally hundreds of cannabinoids in cannabis, but what are they? And more importantly, how do they work? Hey there, I'm Matt with Lazarus Naturals, back with another video in our educational series, CBD 101. Today, we're talking cannabinoids or cannabinoids. You say GIF or GIF? We've talked a bunch in this series about the endocannabinoid system, the network of receptors known as the ECS, that work together to help keep your body balanced, automating background processes to keep you alive and well. But we didn't know much about it until very recently. The cannabinoids found in cannabis were discovered first back in the 1940s with CBD and CBN. 20 years later, THC was isolated and discovered to be the reason for the high that we'd known about for thousands of years. Finally, in 1988, scientists were able to pinpoint where these molecules interact with our body, a master network of chemical signals and receptor sites they called the endocannabinoid system. They accomplished that by interacting with CB1 and CB2 receptors found throughout your body. For example, endocannabinoids might target CB1 receptors in your brain to say, hey, I think we're hungry, while others might bind to CB2 receptors in your immune cells to help slow inflammation. Your CB1 receptors are more commonly found in the central nervous system and affect things like your mood, brain activity, and stress levels. CB2 receptors are found all over the place, like the lymphatic system and all your immune cells. They're also found in the peripheral nervous system, where they mediate pain responses, and in the GI tract, where they can help with that inflammatory response. This is where phytocannabinoids, the ones that come from cannabis plants, come into play. They can interact with, bind to, and antagonize these receptors to promote different effects, just as your own naturally produced ones would. And while there are hundreds of cannabinoids out there, many of them exist naturally at such small levels that scientists really haven't had the chance to study them. And given that we just discovered the ECS in 1988, the research compendium isn't quite as robust as we'd like. Still, we know a few of them fairly well. Scientists have put a lot of effort into figuring out how they work independently and together to mirror our naturally occurring endocannabinoids. It's like, we get it, THC, you're popular. The it cannabinoid is so well known and beloved for the euphoric effects that people have been using therapeutically or perhaps recreationally for thousands of years. More importantly, it was the easiest to study since it was the one with the most obvious effects, getting people stoned. It also showed relief for pain and nausea, reduced inflammation, and stimulating appetite, along with that classic euphoric uplifting high. We talked about THC and the endocannabinoid it mirrors anandamide in our last video, but it's worth repeating. THC's effects are in large part thanks to its ability to alter our perception. Ah uh, yes, the up and comer. The not as hot, but arguably more interesting little brother is of course why we're here, CBD. It's been overlooked before because its effects aren't anywhere near as obvious as THC's. And yet, ever important, CBD works in the background with the ECS. Depending on the environment and your body's response to it, it may encourage or limit some functions of the ECS. It has the unique ability to antagonize the receptors that work with THC, which might make THC less effective and make you feel less tired, anxious, or hungry when it's in your system. CBD shares many of the same properties as THC, like pain relief, reducing inflammation or nausea, and helping you sleep. Still, it's considered the therapeutic cannabinoid because it doesn't have the same intoxicating effect. Instead, it binds or has an affinity for both receptors and encourages the ECS to operate at optimal levels. You thought CBD was chill? Meet CBN, CBD's even chiller cousin. CBN is a degraded form of THC and kind of accidentally was one of the first cannabinoids to be studied. Scientists discovered that as cannabis ages, CBN becomes more prominent in the flowers. It binds to CB1 receptors similar to THC, though its psychoactive effects are only like 10% as strong. Some evidence suggests that it might also act as an anticonvulsant and anti-inflammatory and reduce nausea, similar to THC. But it's known primarily for its popularity as a sleep aid. It may interact with the ECS to help support a regular sleep-wake cycle too, according to research from the 1970s. That same study said that sedative effects were stronger with THC in the mix. However, science is still out on whether or not that's true. Regardless, it has demonstrated some other interactions with CB1 receptors that highlight potentially neuroprotective properties. 
Finally, meet CBG, the ultimate team player. CBG was also discovered early on and thought to be the cannabinoid best armed to help you with pain. It was identified in young cannabis and hemp plants and acts as the precursor or mother to many other cannabinoids, including THC and CBD. As a plant grows and is exposed to light, oxygen, and temperature, a few chemical reactions occur that transform CBG into other cannabinoids. And like those other cannabinoids, CBG has demonstrated anti-inflammatory properties, which may help with aches and swelling. This non-intoxicating cannabinoid is also known for how well it plays with others. It's thought that it works well with cannabinoids and even terpenes to boost the effects of those molecules on the ECS. This is known as the entourage effect. The entourage effect was discovered by Dr. Ethan Russo, and basically it highlights the relationship between each compound and shows that cannabinoids tend to be stronger when they're taken together or with terpenes instead of by themselves. Well, that's the full rundown on our major cannabinoids. We've got lots more information on the entourage effect on our website, and of course, more great CBD education coming your way in this channel. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.